do you go from dance to hosting? Was Rap City the first thing? Yeah, I did probably because I've done some acting work, and of course I've done theater and stage show meeting in front of the camera. Was comfortable as actor, interviewing was a whole different thing. Um, I actually was brought on BET to be a guest on Madeline Wood's show. She had a show called Video LP. So they had me dance perform on a show like it with Jenny Lee Nigel and with Sonny Couch and Walker. And so as we're having a conversation, I can see the producer from Rap City come downstairs going like seeing me make sure I talk to him before I leave. And he's like, oh my God, we're just listening to you talk. Would you ever consider hosting Rap City? And I'm like, sure. Like, because it turns out, when you're a dancer, you don't turn down anything, right? You work for yourself. We didn't have agents then. You're pending for yourself. So you say yes to pretty much everything. So I had to audition like four or three times. And then they put the stuff up there. And of course, the powers that be um, weren't feeling me. One, I didn't look apart, right? Two, a female voice in hip hop is something really ever heard or saw. Um, but because I knew and spent so much time with all of these artists on the tour buses, with their family, behind the curtain, um, that I had more information about them and the story. And because we all grew up in the cluster together, I knew most of them before they had their deals. I was a starving dancer. So I had relationships that you just can't take information that you can't put on a teleprompter or a script. So uh, he got Sean Cedar was really meant to that for me. And we seen all the labels and arts were requesting me directly. And that's kind of how I got the show. Prince Asia was one to usher me in. We had done the spring thing, something in Jacksonville, Florida, which was a wild weekend. I got to interview Outcast first. And I started to grow. I had really, really good producers, right? Because you start to see the things that are like clutch words or, you know, habits and stuff like that. They were able to like pick me apart and show me what to do, what not to do. And then I learned about producing a show and stuff. So I got to do it later on in the career. But it was a blessing, you know, hip hop was my wheelhouse. Man, they wanted one sometimes to feed them more information than they could give to me. Um, but working at BT was, was tough, you know. When, when the powers that they are upstairs are men and you don't physically sexually excite them because you're not their type, they're like, yeah, no. So there were other people in the network probably got more love than me if it wasn't for the artist or the fact that I had to work in times hard with the knowledge and the experience and the labels falling. My career there would have been probably shorter than seven years, but it was a fight every year still. I would wow. make more as a dancer and a choreographer than I was in my seven years of doing Rap City. And radio happened while I was there. Lee Williams had gone on vacation. Oh, she had put a prohibition in Hot 97 in New York. So they had me come in filling for a full week. Then they offered me weekends. Then literally in two weeks, they offered me a morning show with Dr. Bay and Lover. And then literally like in six months, they had me uh, audition with Big Bay in Los Angeles. Uh, they loved me. So I moved out to LA. And that's when I started producing Rap City uh, live in studio and all location in LA. So they just kind of happened one right after the other. Wow. I love this story. I mean, mainly because 